What's up, guys? You want to see how we built this quick and easy built-in bookshelf? Stay tuned. With the help of my wife and our dog, we cut up our three-quarter inch sheets of plywood into 16 inch strips so we could best utilize our sheets without any waste. This is just a sanded paint grade plywood. This whole box is gonna be painted after, so don't waste any money on anything fancy if you're gonna paint it. And then bring everything over to the miter saw and get all of our lengths cut down so that we have more manageable size pieces to work with. Then with a square and a pencil, I'm just marking a line 3 eighths of an inch in so that I can then take a drill with a countersink and put some holes so we can attach this box together. Now this drill bit has the countersink built right in uh, or you can do this separately. And I use these little angle clamps just to help hold things. It's not really necessary for this, but it just makes it a little easier so I don't have to fumble around with the big sheets. I did screw the other side, but I didn't record it for some reason. So we're just doing the same process, adding these little brackets just to help flush everything up, help hold everything in together. Now I'm gonna put a screw on either end, making sure those boards are nice and flush. And I flipped it over to its side, gonna add a couple of screws, not all the way in, and then lay it on its back just so I can reach my arm inside there and get this box nice and flushed up. Just makes it a little easier this way as opposed to trying to do it with the right side. And then we're back. More 3 8 lines, more self drilling, and a lot more of the same stuff. And I'm just going to line up my bottom panel and my top panel, making sure they're nice and flush and even with the side panels. Just trying to figure out now what is the best layout for the shelves, what's going to give us the best openings. So I decided on three shelves, so now I'm just doing a little math in my head, which never turns out great, so I went somewhere else and did actual math. And then we're just marking the centers of our shelves so we can again drill some more countersunk holes so that they're perfectly in the center of those shelves. I like to just measure what I have marked on the top and transfer it to the bottom just to make sure everything is exactly the same. It's very easy to mess these up when you flip them to the other side. And then you guessed it, more drilling countersinking. And then I done did made a boo-boo. Mistakes were definitely made. They were supposed to be 14 and a quarter, but I made them 14. So then we have to recut them, and these ones fit nice and tight. Tight like a toy gun. So again, we're just tagging a screw on the top, and I'm using that square to make sure the shelf is nice and square and level once we're done. Then tagging the bottom. We're gonna repeat that process for all three. I'm just doing the one end of them. We'll flip it around and finish the other side after. And this can make it a little easier too to preset your screws into the hole so you're not trying to line it up trying to get the screw started and everything at the same time. As you can see on this board, I put a mark on the top and bottom of what is the shell so that I can help line it up a little easier. And then we just flip it over and we're adding those second set of screws. I still check to make sure they're square, but if that other side was good, these ones should automatically go too square. So now I'm just cutting up some select pine from Home Depot. It's just pretty cheap. Uh, I didn't want anything fancy because it is going to be paint grade and I'm cutting these down to two and a quarter. You can use MDF, but the durability on it's a little lower and this is going in a rental unit. So I wanted something that was going to stand up a little bit better than MDF. And then more cutting chunks down to their final lengths for this face frame. So I'm just cutting the two side pieces and then I'll cut all five of the horizontals that'll cover the shelves after. I 
my favorite way to put a face frame together is with pocket holes. Some people don't like pocket holes, but they really are great for something like this. Uh, so I've got this little portable dig. You can get nicer ones, but I bring this out to site uh, as well, so it's nice to have something portable. Probably should get a nicer one, but this one works really nicely, and it's super cheap. So if you're not using it a ton, these are definitely a great option. Yo, bud, I think you're about to forget something. Yeah, that blue and gray thing on the counter? You need that, you dummy. And then for assembling these face frames, it's definitely worth having a set of clamps to clamp it together. It really makes getting these pocket holes uh, nice and flush and level and lining up really nice super easy. Uh, you can do it without them, but it definitely makes it a lot harder. I'll just put in the top and bottom for now, and then after we'll transfer the whole face frame onto our box. So we can use the shelves on the box to mark out exactly where the face frames for all those centers need to go. It's a lot easier than taking the tape measure out and trying to measure them. It's just a lot easier to make mistakes that way. I just take a square, put it down that shelf, gives me a, a spot to mark on that face frame. They turn out perfect every time with this. Now it's just as easy as lining up these centers with your pencil mark that you just made, making sure the face is flush, and then tagging a bunch of screws in. This is the back side of the face frame. So once we put this on it, you won't see any of the pocket holes anyways. I'm just gonna nail this on with an 18 gauge brad nailer, but you can definitely put pocket holes into that box and have some hidden pocket holes. But since this is paint grade, these are just gonna get filled and get painted after, so you're never gonna see it. And I just took some scrap plywood and I'm making a base for this. It's not gonna be visible, so it doesn't have to be fancy. You can make it out of anything. Uh, just something to prop that up, get it flush with the height of our face frame now. And then I just hit the whole thing with either 120 or 180, whatever you got sitting around works. Just get any roughness, any dings, any pencil marks off of it uh, before you bring it out to site. And this is what she looks like, all finished up in the shop, ready to go out to site and get installed. And then she's all installed and ready for the customer to come in here, prime, paint it, and finish her off. Now, if you want to see some more of our cool builds that we got coming up, some stuff like this bad boy right here. This is going to be a beautiful computer desk. That buy is almost done. Or something like this. This is a nice end table project. We got videos dropping for those very soon. You can also follow us on Instagram at Timber Revival Studios. And if you want to see some more of our home renovation side of everything, you can check out our other company, Atlas Home Improvements, where we do full bathroom renovations, tile install, and all sorts of cool stuff around people's houses. Now, the real question is, what am I doing right now? Just poking at it like a Neanderthal. Cool stuff coming on. Uh, just stay tuned for that. Apparently, I don't know how to look at a camera. I'm not sure what's going on. Where do I even look? Right here? Okay, that's enough out of you. You're done.